part of why Zoroark, uh, that deck that sort of we heard rumblings about, but haven't really seen uh, in full force until today. And I think this is maybe what the third time we've had it on stream. Yeah, it's popped up a lot, and it's it's seen a lot of success, especially if it's able to get on in the in the eighth round here. Um, I know, especially when you come to a match like this, it can be very important if you're playing uh, those uh, cards like Professor Kukui. Uh, it doesn't look like I see that, so that could make knocking out uh, oh. Gardevoir is pretty difficult. Yeah, um, definitely with uh, with Bulu capping out at then two ten with a choice band, yeah. um, and having to discard all energy as well. Maybe he's just gonna have to focus on those Zoroarks. We'll have to see. Uh, looking at the prize cam for Malik, and uh, not terrible. He's gonna definitely be able to work with that over on the other side for Nico. He's just gonna uh, two double colorless. That's, uh, that's it's a bit not, sketchy. It's yeah. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not terrible though. You, you could be seeing four DCE. So. That's a, at least there's some uh, resources he can work with there. But yeah, both these players at 502, I think a win will almost just cement them in a really good position in top 32 to, uh, at the end of today. Yeah. Uh, one thing we do see is the, the Mew coming down from uh, Malik there is uh, sort of a new tech that's been put into to Vikabulu, recognizing that Guzma is a card that's played a lot and it needs a free retreater to be able to switch into, given that it typically doesn't play Floatstone. Yeah, uh, it's it's a it's a new tech and an old tech. We saw it in the very first renditions when this deck was, it didn't really know what it was going to do. It had a Tapu Koko promo, it had Mew in there, it had all sorts of different uh, free retreaters, just trying to focus on uh, taking advantage of Guzma. Uh, we do see Mew coming back now because being psychic is pretty good right now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There's a, there's a card called Buzzwall, and <laughs> it can be awkward to knock out. Yeah, I think I think we've heard of it. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to see this uh, Gardevoir Zoroark deck here, probably looking for a turn one into a, a Bridget maybe to get as many Pokemon as he can into play, but looks like that's a pass uh, yeah. just with a Zoroark and a, and a Routes down. So this really opens the door for... Uh, Malik to get down a Bridget, get down a couple of Grubbins, a Tapu Bulu if he can, get an energy on board and really do what Vika Bulu does best. Yeah, th this opening turn for the Vika Bulu player is always so interesting. Do, do you want to show that you have everything? Because uh, it looks <laughs> like he's got a lot of great stuff. Uh, how much of this do you want to play down? Because you don't want your opponent to, to just immediately end you out of uh, all the goods. <laughs> I mean, something that's very interesting is that Malik to his credit, was, uh, sorry, Nico, to his credit, was actually able to get down that parallel city. Uh, and that is a pretty big hindrance. I mean, what are you going to put down now as the Vika Bulu player? Are you putting down one Grubbin? Are you putting down a Bulu? And then when that Grubbin's knocked out, you know, you're not going to have access to that strong charge. Yeah, I, I think you almost just play down uh, two Grubbins and, and just... Swing with Tapu Lele. <laughs> yeah, I, you, you got to find something. And it, it can be awkward if you lose your only Grubbin here. Uh, say Nico was able to find uh, the double colorless energy, Zorark, and uh, just really get a big push. Uh, you can't win if you don't have uh, Vika Bulu, uh, the Vika Vault down. Yeah, ops for a Remoraid. Now, a 1 1 Octillery is not typically something you actually see in Vika Bulu, so that's a really interesting inclusion there. Uh, puts down a Remoraid and one Grubbin. I mean, there's nothing to show you that he's even playing Bulu at this point. Yeah. Uh, he's got the. Having the Octillery can be very nice. Uh, it, it's not something that Nico's necessarily going to target down, especially with only one Grubbin. Uh, that's probably going to be the main focus. So you're probably going to be able to see a few more cards and uh, get a pretty solid setup. Now, does Nico just have no hand to work with at all? Or is he just sort of... Well, he, he did play an end to open the game, but I, I'm not sure what he was able to find off that. He did just pass uh, immediately afterwards. So could have Bridget and just be starting to turn slower than usual. And look at this. Even the Mew... Uh, he can use Encounter and uh, go find any Pokemon, and that's probably going to find him Octillery. He's got Candy uh, uh, Vika Vault already. I believe he has an Octillery in hand already. Oh, then um, just so, I don't know. get whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get any Pokemon so you don't draw into it. Yeah. Uh, and there's a, a Vika Vault, so maybe, maybe, maybe he didn't have one already. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> Who uh, knows? I wouldn't be surprised, though, if Nico can open with Rare Candy Gardevoir Zoroark. I mean, that's not always... That should be pretty easy to get in a list that has a uh, four four Zoroark, uh, multiple Gardevoirs, and you know, a few rare candies. So yeah, it's it's definitely what his deck is focused on doing: getting everything out and uh, going in pretty aggressively. We'll see what he's able to find. But uh, certainly, being able to target that Grubbin would be the best play in this, right now. Uh, get rid of that and make sure there's no strong charge, able, no Vike Vault able to come out, so that it can't strong charge onto Pokemon and you know get Malik to start attacking. 
Um, that Mew's not really doing too much with one lightning energy on it at the, at the moment. Uh, what can it copy? Energy drive? Like, it's not really... <laughs> yeah. uh, there is uh, not much for that Mew to be doing right here. Uh, I looked over at Nico's hand. He does have Rare Candy Gallade. I don't know if that's uh, what he wants to go for. I think Gardevoir is definitely his main choice. So when he when he uses this uh, Tapu Lele, he's, he's eyeing up that N. I think he might just use the N before getting out the Gallade. It, it's not what he wants right now. And as awkward as it is to pass up something like a uh, stage two on turn two, uh, he's, I think he's making the right play. Yeah, definitely. I just realized that uh, Mew can also copy Ion Pool, which is <laughs> there we go. A, a attack. So, yeah. you know, get rid of that Parallel City and get some more Pokemon into play, like that Bulu that you want. But it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's weird niche plays that you see after yeah. the fact. No, that's why we don't play the uh, Wild <laughs> River Remorade or whatever it's called. Yeah, this is the correct <laughs> Remorade, right? Um, so we're going to see what the players get off this end here. Yeah. And it's such an interesting card. At the beginning of the game, it can really help you set up, and the late game can really disrupt your opponent. But, I don't know, I tend to like to play it later game rather than early game. Get right. your sneaker mores out early. Well, Nico, looking at that hand, I don't see too much going on. Doesn't even find a Zorark, so no trades available. Uh, nothing to rare candy just yet. Uh, and I, I think he's just going to have to pass with this Zerua. This is going to be a big turn for Malik if he's able to get out the, uh, the Vika Vault. Yeah, Candy Viker Vault is definitely what he's looking for here. Um, possibly even a Field Blower to get rid of the Parallel City. Uh, even if he does get a Viker Vault, though, he's also got to, if he's going to want to copy uh, Tapu Bulu GX, he's going to have to attach a Grass Energy from hand because you can only find with Strong Charge a Grass and a Lightning, not two of one. Right. Um, so he does have to find a few different pieces. Yeah, uh, This is always an interesting play. If you don't have... Uh, the rare candy, do you go for the the Tapu Lele and get the Skyla, uh, or do you just get the Octillery and try to draw into the rest of it? I mean, he's locked into by Parallel City, so he has to get the that Octillery would stop in this that, case. Yeah. But, so, uh, <laughs> Octillery's uh, going to have to find it for him then. So this 1-1 one, one Octillery is actually putting in work, which is really good. Yeah. Um, he, he runs at quite a few draw op options, actually. Uh, there is an Oranguru, uh, an Octillery, uh, which is not usual that you would see typically yeah uh generally you see players just decide on one or the other and he, he's able to find room for a, a few of them but uh we did see what cuts were made to make that happen doesn't have any kakui so no answer to a gardevoir gx yeah some decks some vikabulus are still running uh tapu coco gx as well just to be a big hitter to come in and which would probably be good against a gardevoir deck when yeah. they put down so many energy uh with that tapu thunder gx i believe it is mm -hmm. um but yeah none of that it's pretty I'd, I'd say consistent list, given that he has so many draw options in this deck, and that's probably to try to get out of Viker Vault as quickly and easily as possible, but really hindered by this Parallel City in this game. Yeah, we even see uh, on his deck list, he the one thing that he crossed out was to add for a third field blower, so uh, you'd think he'd be able to find one, and he just hasn't been able to see it yet, but who needs it? <laughs> You're going to find the candy Viker Vault uh, right there off the top, uh, and that's exactly what you want off an end of six. Now, do you think he's going to apply pressure to that Zorua and strong charge two energy to the Tapu Lele, given that he doesn't really have another viable attacker? He uh, could always strong charge to Mew as well, but... I mean, yeah, he could uh, put them onto Mew, copy uh, the energy drive, and doesn't have to worry about the resistance, uh, and just get the 60 that way. And it could also retreat and just use the Lele if he wants to. Uh, it just depends on if he thinks that Mew is going to be important later, or maybe he can bait Nico into knocking this thing out so he can get a real Pokemon down like his uh, Bulu. <laughs> Hey, hey, Mew is a real Pokemon, all right? <laughs> He's trying, Settle but... Settle down. <laughs> uh, a good thing in these Vikabulu lists, you really want to keep an eye on your lightning energy as well. Uh, typically, they run many more grass energy than lightning energy, and only yeah. a few. So Malik is running four lightning energy in this case, and you just want to know how many of those are, are accessible to you. Otherwise, you're just going to be strong charging for one energy, that grass. Yeah, we've seen a lot of players going with a 7-5 seven, seven split uh, in the United States, and... Uh, going with the 7-4, but of course he has those energy recyclers and the super rod uh, to be able to get the most use out of those lightning energy when he needs to. And I think he's having the same debate that we were. Uh, <laughs> I guess he's just going to go in with this uh, th with this Lele. And I, this could walk into Candy Gardevoir DCE. Uh, that, that could be pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, on the flip side, the Mew couldn't be knocked out by pretty much anything. He could just attach to a Lele. Uh, Nico could attach to a Lele and just knock out the Mew, and then you lose a lot of energy in play, whereas right. Tapu Lele has a little bit more stamina, I guess. 
Um, and it needs a few more pieces to be able to knock it out. So it could hang in there a little longer and start picking off a few of those uh, basic Pokemon that only have 60 HP. This could be Malik's plan here. This yeah. is certainly not how Vika Bulu is typically <laughs> typically running. You usually see a Bulu by now. Yeah, that Parallel City has definitely uh, made a big impact. And Nico just cannot draw what he wants. Going to have to use a Sycamore. Threw away the entire hand. Nothing was playable. And still does not find a Zorark or a Rare Candy Gardevoir. He's going to just have to match one Lele <laughs> with another, awkwardly attacking in for 100. Are these x -Ball Mewtwo's, or are we back in? Yeah, <laughs> what's going on, guys? <laughs> no, we're going to have to see. Fortunately, they don't hit each other for weakness, so we're not going to see absurd uh, 200 damage attacks now. But right. Yeah, we've seen a lot of uh, Lele attacking into things today. It's, it seems like a really good backup attacker that everyone has in their deck because you're going to be playing Lele as a support Pokemon pretty much always. Right. A lot of, lot of high-level play from these players identifying when it's the right time to uh, switch up your strategy and use your support as attack. And Malik's probably looking for a field blower here to just finally get rid of that uh, Parallel City from Definitely. play. He does run three, so surely there is one in deck that he's able to use. Uh, but instead, he's just putting more energy onto this Lele. Uh, sorry, more power into this Lele with yeah. his choice band. And I, I don't know if he wants to end. He just saw his opponent play a puzzle of time and uh, put something on the top of his deck. Maybe it was a good card for him. Well, we know it's the Ultra Ball, but uh, Malik doesn't have that information. Yeah, it's all these mind games that you play. Like, Pokemon seems like such a simple game, right? But there are <laughs> so many little choices that you have to make, and you have to read your opponent and figure out, you know, what are they going to do? They could have been three cards that were absolutely useless. Yeah. But... You know, you got you to gotta play to win, not to, you know, not lose. Yes, there you, you go. You got to win more. And uh, I think this win more play for Malik is going to be load up my Lele. Uh, I don't care how much damage <laughs> it has on it. I'm going to knock you out. And uh, eventually you're going to give me a bench space and it's going to be pretty sweet. And so that will be enough, I believe. Uh yeah, he, he did it a little weird. I didn't know if he was going to get that extra energy down to hit the perfect 170. Uh, but it, it, it still works out just fine, and he's going to play that end. So. It does mean that a Candy Carnival pretty much just walks into a Lele <laughs> knockout. That's right. But um, if that Lele can keep going, it can put in quite a bit of work, especially if that Rolts can be targeted next turn. You have to think that Nico's going to be able to find a Zora. <laughs> it's been so many turns and just nothing, so... Uh, that would be big for him. If he was just able to get something going, uh, knock out this Tapu Lele, which is, <laughs> I mean, it's done way more than it's needed. So <laughs> he is, is pulling his weight for sure. And I don't think we've even seen a Tapu Bulu from <laughs> right? at all. Like, what he heck hasn't is even, this? <laughs> yeah, he hasn't even had one in his hand. So it's um, now on cue, I'm sure he'll draw one, but we'll have to see. And there's a field blower, though, which is pretty crucial. I don't know that he'd look to play it this turn. You'd probably want to keep it in hand in case... Uh, Nico does play another tool this turn. Yeah. You don't really need to get rid of it, the Parallel City right away, although it does choose to play it. Um, maybe just get rid of the Parallel City and just say, you know, get this thing away. Yeah. Uh, okay. I've got three of these field blowers. Uh, yeah. I've got Octillery, so maybe I'll just find another one for the tools later. Oh, man, I did just pick one <laughs> up from the Abyssal Hand. That's so. right. They're well, all clustered together. Worked out very well for him. He's going to be able to get this big knockout here, and Nico, once again, has got to find something. He's got Ultra Ball, at least, so... Uh, I say Ultra Ball and Rare Candy, but I, you know, that that could get you a Gardevoir, and that will be enough with Infinite Force to knock out that Tapu Lele yeah. a few times over, I think. Yeah, that would work out well for him. I, I'm wondering what that last card in his hand is. If it's an N, uh, that'd be very well. I think it's a, a, a Guzma, though. Oh, he top decks it. But that's a great a card to draw it's fantastic. there. fantastic. <laughs> Uh, able to get uh, some sort of draw engine going here is going to be great for him. Even has Mallow if he wants to pair that up. And uh, he could potentially get a, a few Gardevoir out, even uh, if he wants to go Gardevoir, Zork, and a uh, lot of different options here for sure. And something he has to think about as well is what card he's going to trade. A lot of these Zorark players have to think, you know, what card is not useful in this matchup? Sometimes it's very obvious. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's quite difficult to choose, you know, which card is going to give me that slight edge over the other card um, in terms of keeping it. And I think I see an enhanced hammer in his hand, and I think that's the card you're going to throw away pretty quickly <laughs> with trade. That would be a, a bad one in this matchup, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, but what does he get with this Mallow? Does he want to get multiple guard of out? I, I, lo I love Zora that when I, when I see him grab, uh, he doesn't just go immediately grabbing the Zork. He grabs the Evo Soda because he knows that card is going to be completely useless for him in the coming turns. So when he trades in, grabs this Evo Soda, he can play it for the Zork that he was going to get anyways. 
And uh, now he just doesn't have that card in there. So beautiful play there by Nico, playing to all of his outs, even though he's had a pretty rough start. It looks like he's making a pretty nice swing turn here. Yeah, very clever. It means that he won't trade into the Evo Soda, for example. It means those trades would be that just a little bit more effective. Yeah. Um, also means he's not going to be end into the Evo Soda. Yeah, That's don't want to see that. <laughs> it's like seeing all those Bridgets later. <laughs> So even with just one energy, Gardevoir is going to put in enough work to knock out this Tapu Lele. And you've got to think, you know, now a bench spot with the Parallel City gone, lots of bench spots are open, but now is the turn that Malik can capitalize on this and actually put Pokemon down. Does he want to even go for the Tapu Bulu? Because even with a choice ban, even with Nature's Judgment and the energy discard, he's not actually one hit KOing this Gardevoir. Right, and, it, and it's definitely an awkward spot that Malik's going to find himself in. To hitting Gardevoir, it doesn't work out very well for you. This deck plays Max Potion, so he can just remove that and knock you right back out. Uh, if you're going to be attacking with Mew, if you're playing, uh, if you're using the Bulu, uh, he can set up to do a two-hit knockout right back on you. So it definitely gets a little shaky here. Yeah, I think the uh, the game plan would just have to be to knock out the Zoroarks. Typically, yeah, uh, that's what I'm the, thinking as well. The Pokemon that you can actually just hit. Um, you know, Viker Vault, if you have to, you can attack with that as well. But again, it still doesn't do enough. It's 150 with Electro Cannon, 180 with a Choice Band, not hitting that 230. So we're going to have to see here if um, he goes for the Tapu Bulu or if he tries for an Energy Drive. It's a very awkward spot. Yeah, it, it's a big ask as well to, to get the, the Bulu Choice Band Energy. Uh, he's also played a lot of energies as well, so does he have another lightning energy? Does he need a recycler to get uh, a few more of these back into his deck? And we'll yeah, really just have to see. I think when Vikavolt Bulu sets up well, has those great first turns, it's actually a really fantastic deck that works really in sync with itself, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but when it doesn't set up, it doesn't work at all, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and you can really feel for Malik, he's kind of struggling here, just trying to piece something together, trying to get some damage down and some combinations that might work, and Nico, even though he had quite a slow start as well, um, still in a much better position now with two Zoroarks and a God of War that can essentially hit for quite a lot of damage uh, quite cheaply. Yeah, and that's just the power of that Parallel City. That was the only thing that stopped Malik from having a big board and being able to set up uh, a few of these Tapu Bulus, but I, we just haven't seen one now. <laughs> he hasn't been able to play anything down. Yeah, there certainly hasn't even been one in his hand that I don't think <laughs> yeah. we've seen, so whether it exists or not is the next question. <laughs> that's right. So it, it's just a deck that's playing with your mind here. So we're seeing... Checking his discard pile, I believe. No? Searching his deck. Oh, Strong Charge. Of course, yep. he's just selecting a Grass Energy and a Lightning Energy, attaching it to one Pokémon. Uh, you've got to think at this stage, maybe it's the Lele again. Uh, that seems to be his attacker of choice. He hasn't really had much of an option otherwise. I mean, he, he did also get the Guzma with the Tapu Lele, so whether he's targeting the Ralts, maybe, to get a knockout on that and put himself down to two prizes, it means that he just has to knock out a Zorok GX to take the game. Because uh, he did take a lot of those prizes quite cheaply at the beginning of the game. Right. Um, this can also be pretty risky, though. If, he's gonna, if he uses Tapu Lele to do it, uh, then he could just find himself being returned knocked out, and that's two more prizes for Nico, and he hasn't had to work very hard for them. They've just been sitting there. Yeah, so, essentially. Uh, probably going to be using the Mew uh, and target down the Rolts. Uh, just hasn't had the, the Bulu Choice Band to work out for him. Uh, doing the order of operations correctly here. Yeah. Uh, Run away, retreating the pop Mew. back in. Yeah, <laughs> so it means that he doesn't have to discard the energy off the Tapu Lele there. Yeah. He can still get the knockout on the Rolts. And yeah, only sending out that Mew, you know, gives up one prize, doesn't give up those two prizes of the Tapu Lele. And that Malik actually goes down to two prizes in certainly not employing his best strategy. <laughs> yeah, and this, the taking that extra prize means that Malik is at two prize cards left, and he's just trying to look for one GX knockout, and uh, you got to assume he's looking to get a big swing on the Zorark GX uh, for the win. Yeah, one Tapu Bulu. With a choice band, a strong charge, a grass energy. It sounds like a lot. It really isn't when you have a Viker Vault already <laughs> yeah. in play and a Tapu Lele with an energy to retreat with. Can definitely make it happen. We're going to see Nico playing uh, to his outs here. He's using this Ultra Ball. Probably needs to uh, take some cards out of, ne of Malik's hands. He's got so much. Uh, but we also see the Octillery, so... A uh, little bit of give and take there. You'd think that the optimal strategy now would actually be to take out the the Viker Vault, but unfortunately there's nothing that uh, Nico has in play right now that can actually achieve that 150 uh, on a non-GX Pokemon, non-GX, yeah. non-EX. 
removing that Ralt meant that there's no Candy Gallade DC, and uh, that's the only real way I could see that uh, Vika Vault falling. Yeah, definitely. So now we know that uh, Malik will be able to get off a strong charge next turn, so it's just that threat of that Tapu Bulu coming to play with three energy straight away. We can also see a choice band in his hand, so... Nico recognizing, you know, I'll put down a couple more routes. I'll put down another Zorua just to get myself set up so I can win more next turn um, if you don't win this turn. Yeah. Uh, Malik, he looks at his hand. He sees Skyla, and uh, that means he could get a Bulu down, but you, you also can't uh, use Guzma on the same turn. So a little bit awkward for him. Uh, it looks like he's just going to try to thin out a little more and uh, find an answer. And yeah, right now nothing is really going to beat this Gardevoir. Yeah, and this is where that Octillery and Oranguru kind of come into play. Uh, you know, he can thin his hand down, he can look at so many cards this turn, but it looks like he's committing to the Tapu Lele. Going to put potentially 90 damage onto that Gardevoir, and uh, this really opens up the door for uh, Nico now. If he can evolve into a Gallade and get that Vikavolt active, uh, it could really put Malik much further behind. Yeah, and we haven't seen a Grubbin, we haven't seen anything really to uh, to think that Malik would be able to get anything set up, and he just drew a, a lot of cards that don't do anything. I, I still haven't seen a Bulu. A lot of cards that aren't Bulu. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we didn't see four in the prize cam, right? Right. He uh, he even saved his strong charge, hoping that he'd be able to find a Bulu and then get the energies down. Instead, he drew into all the energies he wanted to strong charge. So awkwardly going to strong charge now, and where do you put him? <laughs> yeah, for sure. If he attaches them to the active Tapu Lele you know, it's likely going to be knocked out. And that Gardevoir, any damage you put onto it can just be max potioned off. Yeah. It does exist in this deck. So we're going to have to see. Um, and even if it is in the discard pile, this deck does run four Puzzle of Time to get back that max potion. Yeah, I almost think the correct play is to just put him on uh, Oranguru and just have something that can retreat later. Uh, you could set that up. But now he's going to focus on... Uh, the Vikavolt as a potential way to knock out this Gardevoir if uh, Max Potion doesn't come down. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be softened up. 90 damage through that Tapu Lele, and then 150 from Electro Cannon is enough to seal those last two prizes. Uh, I have to credit Malik with being able to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. Like, a lot of players kind of only know how to use their <laughs> deck and the strategy that that deck employs. Um, they don't really know what to do when the deck fails to work how they expect it to, but he's really... You know, must know his deck well and knows what he can do and where to put the damage, really. Yeah, it's a, he's he's been definitely piloting this awkwardly, but <laughs> uh, it's it hasn't really been his fault. He's he's just done everything that his decks allowed him to do so far, and the fact that he has been dominant and already taken four prizes uh, with no, none of his main attacker is uh, pretty extraordinary. So there's the Gallade. And he's digging with, uh, Nico is now digging with trade. He's got the DCE. Yeah, man. He says, all right, where's Guzma? You can get Guzma? the Guzma. <laughs> Premonition. Uh, this time I'm going to Premonition. I'm going to make sure I get it. And uh, it, I believe. Don't see it. Yeah, he would have to have another. Uh, I think there was an Ultra Ball, though. No? Yeah, he chose not to get it. I don't know if that's a nod to just not having another Tapu Lele uh, to go find the Guzma. He gets rid of the Choice Band uh, with the Field Blower. Either just to get rid of Field Blower, or he's not going to take the knockout on Tapu Lele and just doesn't want to have want it to have the Field Blower in the future. Yeah, what what a wild draw! He just oh, oh he he's got the Guzma well. already, so uh, that's that's pretty fantastic for him. Uh, double whammy here, having the energies on the Vika Vault when it gets knocked out, you're losing those energies too, and uh, that's a big swing there for Nico, able to put himself in a pretty great position just needing two more prize cards. Yeah, it pretty much guarantees that we're not going to see a Bulu this game as well. I mean, if he's going to put it down, he's not going to be able to power it up to do Nature's Judgment or a Tapu uh, Wilderness GX. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's Lele against the world, I think. <laughs> Lele and I friends. Think, I think the world's going to win. <laughs> I think uh, I think this was the picture of all the support Pokemon, right? Isn't right, yeah, the, the, this is our slide. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you can just, just see uh, how it works. Showing it all off. Uh, Oranguru... Yes, it is only a support Pokemon. Rarely do you attack with it, but its attack is not actually that bad yeah. uh, when you're against a deck that might have a lot of energy attached. I've seen Psychic do some work before, so uh, that, that's also another reason why having those energies there could have helped him out. Uh, I think he's kind of reliant on just getting as much energy as he can on this Lele, hoping that it doesn't get Guzma back up. You s sacrifice the Oranguru, and maybe you can get enough energy to knock out the Gardevoir. Yeah, I mean, is that what he's digging for here? He will need a choice band to be able to 
No, I don't think even a choice band will get him the knockout. Yeah, I think he, it would just be shy. He'd have to wait for one more turn. He has the choice band energy Guzma, so I think he just has to hope the Oranguru uh, can take the hit. Maybe. I, I'm not sure <laughs> what, what, it, what his plan is now. He can just come up and hit a Zorak for 60. 60 but, damage? Uh, it's, it's certainly a little bit awkward I mean, for if him. it was a Zorua, this is another story, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, 90 damage I mean, there? we're just the double colorless energy and a uh, fairy or a choice band away from uh, Nico being able to take the win here. He just needs to retreat and use his Gardevoir and knock out this Lele, and that'd be game. Well, like we said before, he's doing everything he can with the resources that his deck has given him. Yes. <laughs> uh, it seems like all four Bulu might be solidly at the bottom of the deck. <laughs> uh, just not going to be seeing this game. So. Yeah. Hopefully in the game two, we'll see a bit more of a, a typical Vikabulu setup. And you can see how, you know, everyone out there can see how the deck is supposed to run. Uh, you know, that turn two Viker, Viker Vault that they typically always have. Uh, no matter if you end them or not, they're always like, oh, I had the candy Viker Vault. <laughs> and, and Nico has three cards left in his deck. And he's just like, where are these? Because <laughs> he just wants the fairy energy or the floatstone able to find that there. And uh, that's going to be game one. And I'm assuming this time, Malik... We'll go first. Hopefully get a Bridget that won't be under uh, <laughs> Parallel, Parallel City, City Lock. Yeah, that did not work out very well for him. And I mean, that was a true testament to Nico's deck, honestly. He, he did not have anything going for him. He drew so poorly, and he was just able to play every one of those percentages correctly. Also got a little lucky that his opponent didn't have its main attacker, <laughs> uh, but he did everything he needed to do, and he was able to find the win with uh, just one card left in his deck. <laughs> I mean, forgetting how powerful Parallel City was in that first game, uh, you know, disrupting disrupting Malik at the beginning of his turn. Just in general, I've seen a lot of players this uh, at this tournament, just including that Parallel City, bringing it back. It was yeah. a very big card initially. Uh, was in that Guard of Why Sylveon deck especially. There was a lot of discussion about, you know, two Parallel City or one. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people were just playing it. But why do you think it's come back? And, and, you know, a lot of people are including at least one in their deck now. Yeah, we well, we've seen a lot of people trying to... Uh, work around these decks that focus on their big bench. We've seen Volcanian be popular, and uh, uh, the Vike of all Bulus, they like to get a pretty big bench as well. So limiting their bench can be nice. I've seen players flip the Parallel City and limit the, the amount of damage that uh, the Bulu can do. If you can limit them to only doing 190 with a choice band, your Zork can survive. So we've seen that be very effectful. Uh, and then Dangerous Rogue, you just want to block that out. If you can limit your bench by turning it on yourself or... Uh, maybe you can stop them from getting a few rock roughs out. They have to make awkward decisions. Parallel can do that for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, when everyone's turn one bridgeting, if you can combat that with a turn one parallel, I mean, what are they going to do? Right. Uh, well, only one Bulu <laughs> in the prize card, so hopefully we can see one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So prize card's not looking too bad. Nice to start in the opening hand with a Mew and a Grubbin yeah. already. It means that you can bridge it for a couple of different cards or, or get everything that you need rather than have to make decisions between certain cards. Uh, this way, he can certainly get down with a Bridget, assuming he has one, two Grubbins, Tabu Bulu, Mew. Which I is think he drew... The most awkward card in his deck. He found the Vika Vault. He has Rare Candy in hand, but he was planning on using N. And can he really N away Rare Candy Vika Vault on the second turn, or does he just pass here? Uh, I feel like it's really important <laughs> to get the energy down as well, maybe. Right? Oh, it does pass. Okay. He's just going to pass. And uh, I mean, Nico doesn't know what to do about this. Uh, th this is very much like when Greninja passes on the first turn. Do they have the Frogadier? Or are they just <laughs> bluffing? You never know. They always have the Frogadier. That's what you have <laughs> to learn. Single Every single time. Every single time. But there's nothing in his deck that he can actually use to just knock out that. Uh, that grub and either, which is what you want to do, but oh that's my also an goodness. awkward start. What is this Giratina promo in the active pass? This is, is your Duskull pass? <laughs> uh, yes, it is, and uh, what a terrible hand for Nico. And I think that Malik probably has a read on this. Uh, I don't expect him to use his N. He might just play a, a nice slow game, use his Mew and encounter. <laughs> he can go find the Bulu and then uh, start charging it up in, uh, in the following turns. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you don't even need to strong charge this turn. You don't want to put more energy on that Mew than you have to at this yeah, point. I really don't want to see him use N here. Of course, we have a little more information than he does, but uh, I, I feel like he might be. Uh, the strong charge, if he did that onto the Mew this turn and then saved his grass energy, that would mean that he'd have an energy card to attach to the Bulu straight from hand and then use his strong charge to immediately start getting that knockout potential with his uh, Tapu Bulu. So... 
a little bit of a nod there. On the flip side, if he does attach the energies to the Mew this turn, it means he can attach the next turn if Nico doesn't draw out of it, and he can just start using Electro Cannon <laughs> if he has to, and just, you know, taking prizes with Mew if Nico never finds another basic Pokemon, then he could actually just win the game that way. Yeah, I think the Mew copy is uh, just basic. Oh, of course. But yeah, it, um, hopefully he can find some good attack in his deck, and yeah, he does have to play that N, and it's so awkward, but... Nico is uh, thanking his lucky stars. He says, all right, we got we got some game going on. I mean, you can't just play the game where you're waiting for you or your opponent to draw out of it, right? It, yeah. You've got to play like you. I wanted to, but uh, <laughs> but I had way too much information sitting over here in the caster desk. <laughs> but we're going to see here. If he can get a Bulu off, for example, now, oh, yeah. if he just draws into a Bulu, he's in a pretty good position. Uh, it was smart of Nico to protect that Zoroa and put it to the bench, yeah. uh, certainly because there was such a threat of... It being knocked out simply by, you know, Malik putting down a, even a Lele, not even a Bulu. He just had to put it down a Lele, and that uh, Mew with three energy could knock out a Zoroa. Yeah, well, there he is. He's uh, making his camera debut for this international. Uh, it's Tapu Bulu GX, and uh, that's definitely going to give Mew a bunch of great attack options. Yeah, definitely. So now, do that nature's judgment. Uh, do you believe it would have to discard to be able to knock out the Giratina, though? Is it one of those Pokemon that's on that awkward 130 <laughs> HP? Yeah, you don't want to use your GX attack just yet. That'd so, be pretty certainly weird. Certainly not. Uh, so, uh, probably just going to lose these energies and say, yeah, you probably have Zork DC anyways, so <laughs> Mew wasn't <laughs> long for this world. You certainly have enough uh, options to get those energies back as well. He's running two Energy Recycler and a Super Rod. Um, so, those three that you lose, you can put them back in pretty easily and, and keep going. Yeah, love to see this uh, Remorade come down. This means that uh, Malik, although he's taking some early prize cards, he's got potential to be saved from an end. He could get that artillery out, and this could really start to accelerate finding cards like Guzma and Choice Band. I think that's really going to be the key to him winning this matchup, is removing Zorox as fast as possible with his Tapu Bulu GX. Yeah, we talk about trade. We talk about Wonder Tag as being the ultimate support abilities, but we've seen artillery in pretty much almost every matchup that we've been on stream yeah. uh, today. It's and done it's a lot of work today. Such a great card as well. Uh, so we're going to see a, a Nature's Judgment <laughs> with the discard to do a little bit of extra damage than it needs to yeah. uh, against that Giratina. And just as predicted, <laughs> there is the Zorak GX, but not the DCE. Yep, Nico also gets to find that Parallel City and just going to Sycamore try to find a couple more. He needs one more bench Pokemon. How awkward would that be if he wasn't able to take out the Mew? Well, there's a Ralt, so yeah. it's... <laughs> so uh, that works out well for him. Uh, I should also add, he doesn't have the energy, so... Yeah, missed the DCE. Yeah, they're going to have trade. to look for it here. Finds a lot of rolls. Not terrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, misses the energy. Does he play an energy this turn anyway onto a, uh, you know, a rolls on the bench? Yeah, I don't mind that at all. I, I think that we know Malik's going to be targeting down uh, Zoruas and Zoroarks uh, because he doesn't beat the Guardies. So uh, might as well just get these energies down now. In fact, this turn he's probably looking to just straight up knock out that Zoroark. It just needs a choice band. Yeah, um, not very far away. Mew with that free retreat helps out a lot. Yeah, definitely. But I don't think he... He's sitting on a bit of an awkward hand, I think. I see one Grass Energy and a Tapu Lele. So there is enough energy accessible to him with that Strong Charge to be able to achieve that Nature's Judgment. Whether he can get the Choice Band as well, though, to clean up that 210, uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, definitely one key to that would be if he could find Octillery. Uh, that'd be very helpful in getting there. We've seen N in his hand. I guess there are a few order of operations that you have to think of in Vikabulu as well. You know, before you play draw supporters or Abyssal Hand or whatnot, you strong charge first Definitely. just because you don't want to draw into them. Um, he's looking there for some lightning energy. There we are. Yep. Was able to find that there. So he's going to get his energies down. Uh, the Bulu is just one choice band away now. And he's got an end, so he can start to search now and uh, see if he can get there. Yep, there comes down the end, and Nico's probably thinking, mm, that's not too bad, I didn't really have much. <laughs> right. Uh, a rare candy and a Gardevoir would be nice off this, or some energy. Uh, another Zoroark GX, perhaps. Yeah, and Nico, he really did, uh, he said, hey, uh, Malk, I don't think you have it, uh, he, because he left his Zorak with the Floatstone active, and he just thinks that if he's got the choice bands, maybe he can just scoop and try to uh, play a nice game three. Yeah, because I, mean, I, I think if this Zorak falls, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, definitely. Credit to Tapu Bulu, its attack actually discards the energy, and that's yeah. really not something Gardevoir <laughs> likes to see. It doesn't want to have to attach, what is it, uh, 
six energy to be or five in a choice band to that's be able a lot. To, to hit you. And look at that, out. the very first card is that that choice band. So two hundred and ten damage is gonna be the perfect amount here to knock out this Zorark. Yeah, touch, recognizes it immediately, touches it. Uh, and there's not really anything an immediate threat that uh from Nico's side, as you were pointing out there, nothing that's going to return the KO necessarily straight away. Oh, actually, looking at his hand, he's got Candy Gallade. If he could get a Guzma and knock out this uh, Vikavolt, that would be such a big swing. That no would be energies very big. in play, no grubbing. So I think we're going to see him try to get that. He's got the Mallow, but uh, I mean, he's just uh, a Tapu Lele, Ultra Ball, uh, Guzma top deck, Zora could find it. So there's a lot of cards that could get him there, and he's going to play to his outs by playing... Uh, oh, did I he think get he double, has double puzzle? puzzle. He, has, uh, he has Zorak in there. what's in there? there? Zorak GX? Uh, he, yeah, he's got the Zorak, so that's potentially two more cards that he can look at this turn. Yeah, I mean, he has the Mallow as well, so he can choose what two cards they are. Yeah, uh, if he plays the Mallow, though, he doesn't get to use the Guzma. Ah, true, to, so, to knock out the Vika Vault. Yeah, so he's I probably you just play to your outs. You're going to get that Zorark and just hope to find uh, the Ultra Ball, the Lele. There's so many different cards that could get you to the same result of that Guzma. So you're going to have to see here. Obviously, you, you grab the Zorark GX, but what else do you grab with the double puzzle? You do get to take two cards. Yeah. Uh, probably. I don't, I'm not sure. His hand isn't uh, too great afterwards, so... Depends if he's going to focus on resources, maybe get another Zerua down. Uh, he's eyeing up that, actually, the, the other puzzle. So uh, that means that uh, the second puzzle is a live top deck for him now. Well, the fourth puzzle, I guess. <laughs> he does opt to go for the Mellow, so we're not going to see the Guzma play. Uh, possibly too risky for him, I think, maybe. He's yeah. thinking, like, he can't quite do it. Uh, he would need a few resources to be able to get there, to hit that 150 as well, so... Um, Extra energy, Candy Gallade. Oh, and look, he would have got it too. He had the Ultra Ball on the top. No, you never look at the top two cards. Uh, he would have done it. You never look at yeah. the top two cards on your Mallowing. Just saying. <laughs> it was there. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know about this. This is uh, a pretty safe play when you had potential to basically take Malik out of the game. Uh, I, I feel like if you remove that uh, Vika Vault, uh, you can then just start to target down any Grubbin that he benches. If Parallel City sticks, like it, it seemed to stick. Uh, fairly often, uh, I feel like you just dominate this game, but uh, maybe Nico thinks differently and uh, he's going to be able to set up a really nice board and uh, thinks that that's going to be enough. I mean, Gardevoir does have a ton of HP and you can avoid getting knocked out. There's no Kukui. <laughs> yeah, definitely. When you don't see two Grubbin in play or a Grubbin and a Vika Vault, you know, it's a pretty safe option to be able to sort of hamstring Tapu Bulu GX by just clearing out that Vika Vault. Um, but I guess when you're a game ahead, and you're the kind of deck that has a lot of uh, durability, I guess, in the form of uh, Gardevoir GX that can't be one-shot when there's no Kukui around. Right. You can kind of afford to play it a little bit safer. Um, as long as he doesn't bench too many GX Pokemon that just can be one-hit KO'd by that Tapu Bulu GX, you're in a little bit of a safer position, perhaps. Yeah, I'd feel, I'd feel pretty safe right now with this board he was able to come up with. You also get to avoid the risk of just, uh, what happens if you miss? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then exactly. you mallow, and then you don't get to draw <laughs> any of those cards. It, it, it would have been a disaster. So uh, being safe here, big 30 damage. <laughs> it's actually, it could be pretty impactful. <laughs> if, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, we could see sensitive blade choice band stuff happen later. <laughs> it, maybe he uses his... Well, you never really use your GX attack. You don't want to keep the energy. Yeah, on it's board. kind of funny, isn't it? You heal yourself, <laughs> but then you're you're just giving your opponent ninety extra you don't damage want to, to do point that, on you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a bit of an odd one. Um, I wonder what he gets back here with the Skylar. Yeah, I, I thought he would be uh, interested in that Octillery, but he also really needs to get more stuff going. And uh, that Parallel City there has haunted his dreams for too long. <laughs> Feel Fieldblower takes out that Parallel City, and he can put a few more things down. I'm sure he'll actually be looking to put down a Grubbin, to be honest. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, recognizing that, hey, Gallade is a card that Gardevoir like, plays. Oh, I almost lost the game <laughs> if you had a Guzma last turn. <laughs> Better just rectify that the turn after. It's <laughs> yeah. fine. I'm going to uh, protect myself. There hey, there you There's are. The Welcome. But now he's also got to find a Grass Energy to attach from hand. Uh, I do see an energy, energy Recycler, though, so hopefully he's able to use that to some effect. Um, turn some Energies back. But yeah, perfect yeah. time oh, to play that. Looks, looks like he's got in hand. Yeah. one of each. Never really want to see that lightning energy in your hand. It's a bit awkward. But again, not a one-hit knockout on this Gardevoir. It does survive by 20 uh, health. Do you think he just uses Horn Attack here and puts some energy somewhere else? Uh, 
It, it, it really, it does the same thing. You, regardless, you, you warn a max potion coming down, and uh, you're going to set up for Nature's Judgment to be a knockout in the future. I don't see that Gardevoir getting, what, five energy on it next turn? Yeah, can... that's, a, that's a lot to ask. I mean, there is the 30 softening it up already. It is possible. <laughs> I think he might use Horn Attack with his Mew. <laughs> Uh, it, it would be the same thing. Just get 30 damage down now, and you can do 210 later. Yeah, for sure. And it also keeps that choice band in play and doesn't give up two prizes. Right. So it's a pretty good, pretty good option. He'll probably also look to get the Octillery this turn, just to get it out there and be able to draw more cards when he needs to, thin out his deck a bit, uh, drawing the cards he doesn't necessarily need now. Uh, a bit curious that he used the uh, Strong Charge before the Recycler. Uh, that may have uh, impacted why he didn't get a lightning energy down on this turn. Yeah, something you have to be aware of, I guess. The, the, where your lightning energy are and where your grass energy are in your deck. And, yeah, a bit of an odd choice there. He also opts to leave the Tapu Bulu uh, in the active spot. Yeah, I don't know if he had a way to get out yeah, of the active Yeah, I think that was there. the issue. Uh, obviously, he can't play... It doesn't play float stones. Uh, he only plays one switch, and I think that's in the prize card still. <laughs> Guzma, yeah, uh, Guzma. You only want to be playing when it's an impactful uh, decision, really. But and wow, yeah, that is uh, turn that too is late. So big. Unfortunately, he may be able to still get a uh, a Viker Vault in play just because he put that Grubbin down. But yeah, clearing it, out, clearing that Viker Vault off the field means that he does have to get that that Viker Vault in play. Yeah, and Mew because it wasn't able to get oh. another energy. Well, Straight uh, away. sometimes you just have it, and that's pretty great. <laughs> Uh, this means that Mew will be able to find enough energies to remove this Gallade from play. Uh, I mean, if Malak has the Guzma, he wins the game. He, but I, I don't think we see that just yet. Yeah, essentially. That would be pretty nice to have Candy, uh, Vikavolt, uh, Guzma. I think I see a Skylar in his hand. Uh, he's using the Energy Recycler now. Yep. I think I see a Skylar in his hand, which could... I mean... Does he have enough cards left to be able to get an Ultra Ball for an Octillery? I'm not sure. That would be pretty great for him. I'm not but sure if that's... I think he has one too few cards. Just counting these Guzmas. I've seen two. Going to get the Strong Charge down as well. Yeah, softened up that God of War nicely. It's um, certainly enough now that it doesn't actually need even the uh, Choice Band. Right. So even if uh, Nico comes down with a Field Blower... Yeah, he's uh, definitely in a great spot now. In a position to knock out that Gardevoir, but he could still swing. He's got to get that energy onto the Tapu Bulu, the, sorry, the Mew this turn. And uh, he has the Skyla in his hand. I don't know if he's uh, choosing just not to play it. Uh, that could potentially find him a different supporter, which could win him the game in the following turn, but uh, it looks like he's just going to play slow, take out this galley. Maybe he's assuming he's going to get end, and he'd rather have a Skyla... Uh, then no card at all. Yeah, for sure. So what does Nico lead it, lead with now? I mean, you're hitting a Mew, which unfortunately is hitting you for 180, but yeah. you're only getting one prize off it. Well, uh, if you bring up the Gardevoir, Max Potion would be your best call if you're able to get the Max Potion and the Fairy. If you bring up the Zorark, then you're really hoping to find Double Colorless and a Field Blower. And uh, it's a lot to ask for, and he just hasn't been able to put together the draws, but this Ultra Ball might be able to help him out here. Yeah, if you had the Tapu Lele left to be able to get a supporter, uh, probably opting for the Sycamore there. Yeah, uh, uh, maybe the N. Uh, I know Malik's sitting on a, f a few cards, and he didn't do much, but that might mean that uh, he could have found those cards in the prizes. Doesn't look like there's a Sycamore left. Uh, yeah. He needs to get the Lele first. Oh, that's true. This deck does uh, only play like two Sycamores, I believe, if he's playing this, that standard list that we've been seeing. So yeah, he uh, if even if he did want to go for it, N is going to be the choice now. Yeah, so he ends Malik down to two cards, and that is fairly impactful, I guess. Um, I mean, with Strong Charge, you just get the energy out of your deck anyway, so yeah, it's a yeah. bit difficult that way. But Nigo himself probably looking for that Max Potion. Max Potion energy would be all right for him here. That would be fantastic. And uh, a, I think we see Max, Max Potion. Potion. No energy though. Awkward. <laughs> yeah. Plays the Zorua down. He's already <laughs> used trade. And he said, oh, um, he I'm the done. Game. <laughs> so there are only six and a half minutes left uh, for a game three. Yeah. Who do you favor in terms of which deck can apply the most pressure the most quickly? I mean, I've I've seen this Zorark Gardevoir deck go off pretty quickly, but if you give it to what the decks are built for, you have to favor the Tapu Bulu. 
uh, Vika Vault. It's just it's such a fast deck. Turn two 180 is uh, what it's known for. It's the reason why a lot of players uh, don't like the deck because they've <laughs> they've had that happen to them so often. Uh, so I'm sure that Malik's going to be looking for one of those. He he just hasn't had it yet. He's had a bunch of kind of goofy starts, and uh, this one was able to work out in his favor. Um, I'm, I'm sure he's trying to get that going. The, uh, sure, this it worked final fine game. the last seven rounds. Though. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's it, only when you're on stream. It got it... him here, and then the curse happens, <laughs> and uh, you draw hands like Jordan did in the last yeah. round. <laughs> and as Naomi put it, she was she was lucky or, or grateful <laughs> that she'd won. That's right. Um, but yeah, turn one here, we're just going to see. I think more of the same from Nico. Maybe a little bit more uh, proactive bridgeting yeah. uh, to be able to get down more Pokemon and hopefully the evolutions a little bit more quickly than we've been seeing. Yeah, uh, so far, uh, Nico's opening turns, he had a turn one N and a turn one pass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, those have uh, not been very good. Certainly not what you want to see, probably in any deck. Yeah. Uh, now on Malik's side, he's starting the Bulu, got Bridget in hand. I uh, see a bunch of other supporters too. That, I think he's eyeing up a, the Mew He's got the Mew well. also. This is the third time he's started that Mew. He only plays one. That single Mew. <laughs> that is uh, working out very well for him. Yeah, he's putting in a lot of work. <laughs> uh, we'll have to see what Nico gets here. They are running down the clock a little bit. We're only at five minutes, which typically isn't enough to play an entire game. I mean, we played two games in about 45, yeah. so uh, hopefully the... Oh, that is a bad hand. I mean, just I, as much as you want to win quickly, you can Oh lose my quickly. gosh. He, uh, that's all his Pokemon. Uh, even if he gets a Bridget, what does he do? I, mean, I think he has two Zoroids left. <laughs> oh my, I, did he shuffle well enough? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> two uh, Zoroids? No, that's, that's oh, enough. he top decks the Bridget. That's a, that's but he's going to find out he's got nothing there. <laughs> he's, he's got, he's got some, some Zorua. Uh, I mean, he can get the rest, but there's nothing else after these Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, his Bridget will get him all of his Pokemon. <laughs> that is everything. Uh, so, I mean, that's not terrible. He's, yeah. He's got options. I mean, like, if you're playing a fast game, you don't yeah. want all of those if extra he, basics. If you can keep them alive, that's fine. But uh, for his part, I mean, Malik looks like he has the turn he's been looking for, which is a Bridget. Yeah, uh, for and one. his hand looked terrible, but that top deck Bridget means that the Zorar can get him trades and... We could see him have the turn two explosive start. Just that one card really uh, able to turn the tides here. Interesting to attach to the active relves, actually. Uh, does mean that a Tapu Lele with a couple of energy can knock it out, but he's probably aware this deck doesn't run DCE. It's yeah. not going to be attacking me anytime soon, but typically not what you would see from players. Right. Uh, uh, most decks are running DCE. Just a good call, knows the matchup, and... Knows he can throw down that energy, and he's probably safe. I think this is the first time we'll see two Grubbins on turn one from <laughs> Malik, which is a nice, nice yeah. change. No parallel uh, city stopping him. He's, yeah. The world is his oyster. He can do whatever he wants. Now, does he grab a third Pokemon, and will it be the Remoraid if he has it, or the Oranguru? Uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to go with the uh, Oranguru, and he can... I mean, if you're going to win a fast game, you're probably playing every card in your hand each turn and uh, just going very quickly, so... And this is the setup he's wanted. This is what Vika Bulu really looks to do every single game, uh, every single match. This is its strategy. Hopefully, it can hit for turn turn two, 180 with the Mew or I've with the Bulu. I've heard the deck can do that. I just, <laughs> it just doesn't happen on stream, I guess. <laughs> it's the new Greninja. Yeah. No, we're, um, we'll have to see what Nico's going to put out next turn, see if he can get all the Pokemon that he needs. Like, he's been missing that turn two Gardevoir, that, even that turn two Zoroark sometimes. Yeah. Um, and if he can get that, then... See if he can start some momentum in his favor. Yep. Uh, I mean, Malik is holding on to that rare candy Vika Vault. He's he's got everything he wants, and uh, Nico also got everything he wants. He's got the Evo Soda. It's a double Zorark. Is probably going to be able to find him some pretty great cards. The N also. Uh, don't know if that's just a hand read or knows that uh, he's going to need six cards in these trades to find a, a Gardevoir or uh, maybe just a double card list to get some knockouts. Yeah, he could apply a lot of pressure this turn. Put a couple more energy down around the field. I mean, Gardevoir doesn't mind if it has a lot of energy attached. That's Works even well. better for it. Like, yeah. Bulu can't exploit that. It's not that kind of card. So, yeah, putting a few more energy down, seeing a lot of your deck with those trades, getting rid of enhanced hammers that you don't need <laughs> with those trades. Those Bridgets, um, all those pesky little cards. Yeah, the cards you love to see turn one, and then, you know, <laughs> after turn one, you're like, why did I run four? Yeah. But we'll see these six cards oh, now. Rare Candy. Rare Candy Gallade? I mean, that's this pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'd prefer to see God of Wars, but yeah. you know, we're going to see some trades. Oh, just, maybe you'll just get the Ultra Balls. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. That, that works out pretty top. well. <laughs>
Uh, but yeah, it looks like he's going to go ahead and get this Gallade. I, I think this means uh, we're probably going to see a float stone and a double colorless energy, and he can uh, start to put on the pressure with Zorark. Uh, he could even use Gallade if he wants to, but uh, it just depends if he values the trade or the premonition a little more. Yeah, I mean, premonition synergizes so well with trade. You get to look at your five cards and essentially just choose two that you want, um, and put them on top, and then take them next turn. Yeah. So it's just such a... synergizes really well in this deck. I don't think anyone back in the day would have thought we'd be seeing Gardevoir, Gallade, and Zoroark all together, <laughs> but, I mean, it works well. We've yeah. seen Miltank Gardevoir, so... Yeah, I mean, anything can happen now. <laughs> <laughs> don't know if he's going to be getting a knockout this turn, uh, unless he's... Oh, he's opting to pay the retreat cost rather than attach the float stone. Yeah, I think Thinking he's about it. probably going to change his mind. Uh, you're going to need every energy p possible yeah. if you're going to win a game where you have... 28 seconds left <laughs> so uh, I, d I don't mind this at all but I, he's just playing a little too slow I don't know if he's going to be able to uh, pull out a victory here not all of us have taunt skills uh, he, he can throw, throw cards I'll tell cards. you what <laughs> uh, so it looks like we probably will be heading into time on Malik's turn and yeah. I don't know that he can take six prizes off two turns uh, likewise with Nico, so I believe that's probably fairly impossible yeah. the 100th <laughs> tie we've seen on stream today maybe yeah, we're trying to set records here in Australia. <laughs> so we're just going to have to get confirmation of whether that's... That is now time. So Malik is uh, turn zero. They'll have a couple of turns each. Um, interesting to see if they just extend the hand and recognize, you know, this is going to go to a tie. There's no way that one of us can win. Yep. Um, or, uh, I mean, you only get 50 minutes on stream, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, make the for most of it, right? Show the, show the players what you got. So we'll have to see... Uh, I think he just wants to show us that he can turn to yeah, he's 180 like, damage, out, right? This is how this deck works. I've done this once or twice. <laughs> well, uh, looks like he can play a few of these cards out. Ultra Ball can get him a playable card. Uh, Field Blower can be used, and then uh, Oranguru could help refill his hand. Just really wants to find a Grass Energy. <laughs> uh, always missing just one piece of what he needs. Right. Gets the Lele. Showing off all the support Pokemon. Yeah, check this one out. Uh, and probably uh, just depends if he wants to grab Guzma. Uh, and I, I think he's he's got his eye on... Uh, well, I, I guess this really depends on how he's looking at the game. If uh, if he was going to be playing a full game, uh, removing that Ralts would be pretty great. Uh, you don't Definitely. have to worry about any Gardevoir. Uh, he could even uh, just play safe, put these energies onto the, the Lele and knock out the Ralts. I mean, with the with the energy still on there, yeah. Heavy it, punish, It's going to be yeah. hitting 60 damage. <laughs> that, keeping that energy around uh, <laughs> means the Ralts is going to fall. Yeah, so much deliberation. <laughs> and then the um, wrong call in the end. Yep, for the irrelevant extra prize. <laughs> <laughs> it's for pride, right? Pride. Yeah. And then he's fighting for it, for sure. He's going to take the, take the knockout on this uh, Ralts. Oranguru's instru uh, Oranguru's instruct for instruct for two. Finds that sneaky field blower that he was looking for so much in game yeah, one. Uh, just as the parallel cities have uh, have gone missing. <laughs> uh, Nico goes, eh, I'll, I'll just promote. We'll see what can go on here. It's like, I don't know the point. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think both players understand that. And uh, we are going to see another tie. Both these players are now 5-0 and 3. That means they're both at 18 match points. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was thinking that 19 would be a, a fairly good spot to be at.